Oh, hi, I'm Anthony Simmons, and this is my lounge. Now, the PCDU boys, Steve and Grant, are always coming up with new and interesting things that they want me to do, and one of them was a trial instructional flight. And thanks to the good folks down at Moorabbin Flying Services, I recently did that. But rather than talking about it, let's go and have a look. Well, here we are at Moorabbin Flying Services and it's time for my trial instructional flight. To say that I'm a little nervous would be an uh, understatement of the century, but, well, I think I'm in safe hands with Laurie Burns, so here goes nothing. G'day, Laurie. Anthony. Your Anthony. willing victims here. I'll be the first to admit that I was nervous, very nervous, before this flight. Even though I know that the physics that dictate a big plane being able to fly the same as a small plane, it's still an irrational thought. Luckily for me, I know Laurie, and that eased the anxiety a bit. The initial briefing with the little model aircraft and the cockpit layout was great. It was clear, concise and simple for me to understand. I may well have got the play school version for morons briefing, but it provided me with the basic understanding of how what goes on with flying goes on. The walkabout part around the aircraft also is the scone, otherwise known as the scale of nervousness, because I could immediately relate to my day job. Same thing, you walk around the equipment and make sure nothing obvious is hanging off dragging in the dirt or otherwise looks a little bit dodgy. I will admit I prefer my fuel to be red rather than blue unless it's in a Bombay sapphire bottle. What I hadn't anticipated was just how small a light aircraft actually is. I've folded myself into my friend's Austin Healy Sprite with an old bow and that was cosy. This was exactly the same. How anyone a little bit taller than my five foot and seven and a half inches manages is beyond me. Another thing I wasn't prepared for was the steering with the rudder pedals. Well, I follow one of those lines. Yeah, on the line. So we'll go up a bit, go up a bit, come onto this yellow line though. And we don't steer. Oh, sorry, we steer with our feet and force it, force it, have it. <laughs> Despite my penchant for walking a lot, I'd need legs like a member of the East German women's tractor throwing team to keep the plane on the yellow line. The other problem is that after more than 20 years of driving various vehicles, I continually defaulted trying to steer with the yoke thingy. Something that no one mentioned was how very quickly it gets hot in a little plane. Even when taxiing with the access door ajar for a bit of airflow, it took 3.2 picoseconds before the gravy was dripping off me and I resembled a drowned rat. The other problem is that I have a scar on my forehead that channels sweat directly into my left eye and onto my glasses, which really didn't help matters all that much. Tango Alpha Echo, Cliff Takeoff. Cliff Takeoff, Tango Alpha Echo. I'd had a few bumpy takeoffs and landings on commercial aircraft in the past, but nothing prepared me for the immediacy of every jolt, twitch or judder that you feel constantly in a light aircraft. Needless to say, the scone rose more than just a bit. There's 60 knots, there's 65, applying some back pressure, and we're airborne. Wow! Once up and relatively steady, the view was fantastic and I saw familiar places from a very different angle. I began to see the appeal of this flying gig, even though Mr Anxiety was still quietly whispering to Mr Brain. Then came the moment when the scone went off the scale. Anthony, you're going to have a go. Uh, I prefer not to. Yeah, no, it's fine. No, I just prefer not to, Laurie. Really? Yep. It's easy. Laurie wanted me to try a turn. I declined as gracefully as I could, considering I would rather sing Start Naked in the Sydney Opera House than even thinking about touching the controls. And then, when I spotted a few old haunts, and with the scone reaching into the red zone, I started to witter on. It was all rather embarrassing. Yep, there you go, that was, that's my school. Ah, oh, OK. There's, there's that playing field there, and there's that big grey building. Yeah. And that's the new gymnasium, that was never oh. there when I was there. Right, can't go up there, goes downwind. Tango Alpha Echo number one. Tango Alpha Echo. Alright, we'll do a pre-landing check. Brakes operating and off. Undercarriage down and locked. Mixture is rich. Fuel is pumped on. Content sufficient. Water temperature pressures in the grain. Hatches and harnesses secure and heels on the floor. Yep. What's 
that bloke doing out the front? Uh, he was, he's been cleared to take off. He wanted a five second or something delay, so hopefully he's going to buzz off before we get there. Otherwise we'll have to go around. Here he goes. Okay. Take full front. Alpha Echo, land. Little land, Tango Alpha Echo. And we're on. I didn't kiss the ground like Pope John Paul when we landed, but by golly, it came close. <laughs> Look, I know, Laurie, it's completely irrational, but I've never been more nervous in my life for <laughs> half an hour or however long we're up in the air. Quite incredible, but as you can see, still shaking a bit. <laughs> yeah, so I welched. I wasn't prepared to take the controls. But I'm not embarrassed, nor am I ashamed. There are people that are cut out in this world to actually take control of a plane, and there are other people that would prefer to sit in seat 22B, and I'm the latter. But at the same time, I'd also like to thank Laurie Burns, who was the instructor pilot, and also Andrew Johnson and all of the crew at MFS that did a wonderful job and looked after us magnificently. Well, from here, am I going to become a pilot? No, I don't think it's going to happen. But am I going to continue flying? Absolutely yes, as long as I can sit in my comfortable seat and also have my gin and tonic and a decent book.